welcome to this week's episode of the Komogi Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Komogi TV, Tipperary Komogi's very own YouTube channel. I'm Jarlene Canan and I'm delighted to have Quiva Purdue from Cash King Cormac's Komogi Club, an Irish senior hockey star, as my guest this evening. Quiva, you're very welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> no bother. Quiva, it's been an unbelievable year for you, I suppose. You know, starting off back in April, you headed to South Africa, you captained Irish Junior, which is under 21 hockey team in the World Cup. Then in July, you, you won your first Irish cap uh, with the senior hockey team. You're in the World Cup in Amsterdam. You had the Euro qualifiers lately. Um, now you're back playing with Cashel King Cormac's true to a county semi-final. Uh, unbelievable year, like I said, so busy um, and still more to come, hopefully. But I suppose I'm going to start off right back to the beginning, rewind right back to the start where it all began. Um, you know, growing up in Cashel, you know, were your family sporty or have your brothers and sisters that are play sport or were, what were you into when you were younger, was we'll it? Yeah, so I kind of did a bit of everything as much as I could, I'd say, when I was younger. Um, definitely focused on camogie. My, I have two older sisters that would have played. Uh, they don't play anymore now, but um, my dad used to play at the hurling as well for Cashel. He won a senior title in 91, and he also played for Tip Minor, and he played for senior as well. Very good. So what were your first memories, we'll say, playing with Cashel? You joined the local club when you were like, what, 10 or 11 or something like that? Yeah, probably younger, I'd say I was about six or seven. Um, played all the way up. Uh, definitely played a few games above my age limit and got stuck in and I played for tip as well all the way up under 14, 16, minor. Very good. Yeah, I was just doing a bit of research before the podcast and I was thinking you were on that um, minor team that won in All-Ireland back in 2016. I wasn't sure then. I was trying to do the maths. I suppose you were still only probably 16, but I looked it up a match report there. After 21 minutes, you came on as sub and you managed to bag two goals in that time. So, you know, you were a very exciting minor, of course, but um, I suppose um, hockey didn't really, you know, start until you went to school in the Ursuline in Turles. Yeah, so I picked it up when I went to the Ursuline in Turles and um, they were really encouraging for everyone to start hockey. And I guess the Camogie helped me, like, like get into it straight away pretty similar kind of like ground hurling if you think about it but yeah when I started in the earth line I did I kept up the pogi as well as starting and, hockey and when you were kind of going you know when you were deciding to go to earth line for school had you thought about playing hockey was it was it one of the reasons or was it just another way of getting out of class or were you just into so many sports or trying everything or yeah, no, I, I would try anything, but my uh, my two older sisters were playing as well at the time, so I'd heard about it and I was intrigued to to get going out there and start it. Okay, so I'm always curious, you know, you hear, like, you know, there's a lot of Komogi players who, who make good hockey players, and obviously you have the hand-eye coordination, the fitness, the team play from Komogi, but there must be some kind of, some hockey coaches must dread Komogi players coming as well. There must be some... I suppose yeah. negatives from playing camogie that you know bad habits maybe that you when you that doesn't transfer to hockey we'll say yeah definitely they always say that we're very aggressive um as well in hockey you can't the ball can't touch your foot so it's one thing you always have to be careful of not to not to kick the ball anyway but yeah no it definitely helps having the camogie background because that eye coordination of having the ball and everything is is really important very good. And like, at what stage did you kind of, you know, realize, you know, I'm pretty good at this hockey thing or, you know, from school, did you go on? Was there interprofessionals or Munster or how did it progress, you know, to where you are today, we'll say? Yeah, so I was playing with Munster under 16s um, when I was about second year, third year in school and Munster under 18s. And from those interprovincial competitions, you get selected for the Irish squads. So I was lucky to be on the under 16 Irish squad all the way through to the 18s and 21 development. And then just in the last recent years, I've, I've moved into the senior squad. Very good. And how did you balance all that, you know, playing hockey, playing school schoolwork, everything growing up, you know, under 16 yeah. and 18? <laughs> Definitely a lot. Uh, when I was in school, I actually played with a club in Cork, um, Cork Harlequins, when I was I started in TY, fifth and sixth year. So that was quite challenging, traveling uh, once a week down to Cork to train and then to play away matches at the weekends. But 
I guess um, you, it's what you have to do if you want to play with the best players. Um, it's hard not having that strong sense of hockey in Tipperary, so you have to go to the other counties like Cork and Limerick where it'd be stronger. Okay, and then was it your parents then driving it for training? Yeah, thankfully I had a, my dad was very good to me driving me everywhere. Very good. And like, so did you kind of from a young age, say like when you started making, you know, Irish squads at a young age to kind of decide, okay, this is, I want to be, you know, make the Irish senior hockey team go to World Cup or go to Olympics. Does that kind of start becoming a dream then and a goal at a young age? Yeah, definitely. I know, obviously, when you're playing Kogi, you're, you're looking to play like those all out in finals and playing in Coke Park. Um, but once I started to really get into the rhythm of the hockey, I just I could see like I had been going to like European competitions and the thoughts of going to a World Cup and Olympics and stuff really caught my eye. So I decided to stop playing Kogi after I debuted in 2019 with the seniors. I actually broke my finger during the match so that was a kind of a sign the hockey were like oh um maybe you should take a step back just to focus on the hockey and try not to pick up another injury um, yeah because i remember that you know you weren't long i suppose out of tip minors and you were called up onto to very senior panel and i remember i think it was against kenny you came on a sub and you know your pace and everything you i suppose for me as a Kamogi supporter was like here's an up and coming you know, a future Tipperary senior star, but I suppose unfortunately we, we didn't see it for Tipperary since or or even for Cashel, you know, and you're obviously a huge loss for Cashel and I'm thinking of Orlo Dwyer as well, like both of you would have won coming up along with Tip and Cashel and, and I suppose, you know, being multi-talented, you know, it's Cashel's loss, but that's why I was surprised to see you back playing with Cashel this year, you know, you weren't, I don't, you weren't there for the first round and, um, you know, you're back and obviously a huge boost to Cashel. You know, you scored 1 5 there the last day in the last group game against Nakavilla Kickham. So, how would I know you said you broke your finger in 2019 and you stepped away? So, how, how, how come you're back playing now? Or, yeah, so um, I've always wanted to go back. Like, as soon as I could, I was, I was going to go back to club definitely. And just how it happened this year would have been so busy. Um, we're on a break period of six weeks at the minute and it just has fallen perfectly for, for me to play club. So my dad is actually part of the management team as well. So he was um, itching me to go back as well. So <laughs> Very good. Excellent. So that's, that's, it's great that you, that you are able to come back and, and uh, you know, you've obviously had a huge influence on a very good casual team so far. You're in a county semi-final now. Um, I know we're recording this on a Friday evening and the quarter, the quarter finals are happening tomorrow and I know this will go out next week when they'll be over but still I'm just going to ask you maybe your thoughts and or have you thought about like Burgess Duhara against Anna Carty um, you would have played Burgess in the group games uh, you would have bet him by a point then the other group is or the other quarter final is Clonty against Turtle Sarsfields you drew with Turtle Sarsfields I don't, you weren't there for that match in the first in the first game so uh, what, what's the thoughts maybe amongst yourself or even amongst your teammates? How do you think those two power finals will go? I'd say they'll be very two tough games tomorrow. I um I have a hockey match myself now, but I would have been going to see one of them anyway. The all four teams are brilliant. I went to see the Drum and Kenoti game and that was very good, tough and fast. So to be honest, I wouldn't want to play any any of the teams again, especially Burgess. Uh that game in Cashel was was really tough. I found they were so strong in the backs, and then we just we just were lucky we pulled away as well with the scores. So everything's so close at the minute. I think you just have to you have to put away the scores early and try and win out the games. So it's wait and see. So for for drama yeah. council, I suppose who are already through to the semi finals. You say you have a match tomorrow. Is that with UCC or? Yeah, my club is UCC, so I'm I'm in Cork. <laughs> And is that is that full on now in season as well, or how does the hockey club season work? Or? Yeah, we started last week was our first uh, league match, so you Munster League, and then we're in the EY competition, which is all of Ireland. Say, so, so full on. Busy. <laughs> <laughs> and you're back in college as well. Yeah, gone into fourth year. And I think nutritional science is it? Yeah. And how does that go on or what would you like to do after college or have you thought that far or have you time to think that far? 
yeah getting getting through this year is my main aim anyway and uh it links in with all the sports and all the performance and stuff that i'm interested in so hopefully there'll be something for me after very good so we have to talk about the brilliant year you had this year um you know, I remember, I think it was December originally, the World Cup was supposed to happen. You know, you were captain of the Irish the junior team. Then it was was it postponed for COVID. Like, that must have been devastating for you. Oh, yeah, definitely. We It was meant to be on in December, but the South African variant came out through COVID. So um, we had quarantined and everything for two weeks in Dublin. And then for mm-hmm. this to come out and been cancelled, it was devastating. Um, we're very lucky though that it did get rescheduled for April and that we still got to go to South Africa which was just an amazing experience and when you say quarantine as, as, a, as a whole team together was it or no individually we'd all quarantined COVID testing had been huge in this Irish setup like we've been yeah constant antigens for trainings proper PCRs it was very intense for those okay. few months leading up even to it yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, but like you said, it was brilliant. It was rescheduled. And what, yeah. what was the feeling like when you were told you were, you were captain, you know, first of all, yeah. you know, to, yeah, to, to be told you're captain of your Irish team, it must have been an unbelievable feeling. Oh, yeah, it was incredible. I was actually joint captain um, with the girl, Caitlin Sheeran from Dublin. And like, it's a huge responsibility itself. So I was glad to have someone to share it with. Okay. Um, and it's funny, we actually have a connection, a relation. Um, both our grandfathers are coming, came from Laura, are nearby. Yeah. So yeah, it's a great connection to have. Yeah, yeah, interesting. And so tell us about, <laughs> t- tell us about the whole sort of elite setup of, you know, being at a tournament like that, being in South Africa. Just how long were you there for? Or what kind of how many people would say would be part of the backroom team and the squad that would have flown out to, to South Africa? Yeah, so each squad is made up of 18. Um, with hockey, it's 11 aside, but it's a constant rotation of subs. So it's great that the whole squad is used every time you go out. Um, backroom team, then we've very, very well um, supported. We've got like, you've head coach, then you'd have assistants, managers, you'd have a nutritionist, SNC. Um, we're very well looked after when we go away on our trips, but yeah. there is a lot of work done for us and we could be and gone how, for so. how does training work would say, okay, so would, would, aside from now that you're in the senior setup would say, so obviously you must have been only back from South Africa and was there, there was inter, uh, friendly internationals or training camps, was it before the senior World Cup then in July? Or how did it work? Yeah, so I came back from South Africa and then I was heading away to Japan in May uh, with the senior squad. It was a warm weather camp and also for selection for the World Cup. Wow. Um, he took panels out, out to Japan and then Japan also came to Dublin to play us in a, in a series. Wow. And what, do yeah. you like that whole, you know, staying away with teams and I suppose it's like being a professional player. Yeah, it's, it's where I would say we're semi-professional where the, the money and the, the funding we're getting there um, just okay. as you need so much support with it. Yeah. Um, we have great sponsors though, but when we do go away on these trips, you're gone for long stints and it took a while to get used to, but I'm, I think I'm, I'm used to it now. It must be great camaraderie and, you know, friendships built up in the squad. You're like your, your family to each other, I suppose, when you're away from your own family. Yeah, definitely. And you're playing with a lot of girls since underage. So you're very good friends with them. Okay. And then, you know, to to go to the Senior World Cup to make your your, your senior debut and, you know, packed stadiums in, in, in Amsterdam, you know, the atmosphere, everything, like, it just must have been electric. Yeah, it was insane. We had, um, I had my first senior cap playing in Amsterdam against Amsterdam and they're actually the world number one um, and there was 10,000 people there so yeah. for just being like a woman in sport and to be in a packed stadium incredible like it was such an experience yeah and how did how did you know reflecting back how how would you say you fared in both world cups and you know you probably would have liked to have done better or how do you think you, know, you did it as a whole or yeah, so the Junior World Cup, um, 
we came ninth, so there were 16 teams and we ended up topping, say, the the eight out of the eight teams that didn't obviously make the quarters and stuff. So oh, okay. we, we had just missed out in our group stage, but then we'd won our three games to finish out the tournament. So we were very happy in that. Oh, very good, we, yeah. Yeah, we'd, we'd finished strong in that tournament. And then with the Senior World Cup, similar, we well, we missed out on our group stage, so we were in the bottom half again. But in the Senior World Cup, we had the world number ones, and we also had Germany who were in the semifinals. So yeah, we had a very tough group. In this tough, World very Cup. tough group, yeah, 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 yeah. And then just, again, no rest for the wicket. You had the Euro qualifiers. It was kind of like a round robin. It was held in Dublin there in August, wasn't it? Yeah, so that was, we hosted it and you basically had to win out this tournament three matches um, to go to the A Europeans next summer. So we won out the competition, so we've gone to Germany next summer. Brilliant, so that's the so that's the Euro European Championship, we'll say, next, yeah. that's next summer in Germany. But then, is there Olympics coming up then as well? Or Yeah, so there's Olympics coming up in 2024 in Paris. Oh, that's 2024. Um, yeah, I was thinking that was next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's loads, you, you, you know, you experience loads of travel, I suppose, which is anyone that plays an international side does, but it must catch mm. up, it must be draining, it must be tiring all the training, or do you just love it? Or, um, yeah, no, it well, it is draining, um, but you have to love it if you're going to be committed to it and everything. We train in Sport Ireland campus up in Abbottstown in Dublin, so we train every Monday and Tuesday. Um, and then over the summer, we train there Saturdays as well. So, And we train every Monday and Tuesday for the whole year round or just when there's... Yeah. Sure. Oh, is it, yeah? Yeah. And how does that work with college then? And... Um, yeah, so I'm lucky with UCD. I'm on a scholarship. Yeah, I'm on a scholarship. So they're very accommodating. Okay. Um, COVID was probably the best thing for me, just with everything online. Um, oh, yeah. Like a catch-up and everything, so... Okay, so every Monday and Tuesday you're in training Irish squad. It's not like there's, I thought it might be the camps coming up to, to tournaments or something, but you're actually all year round training every Monday and Tuesday. And yeah. then, so, oh, oh, very good. <laughs> I, don't know Gosh, how yes. you, I don't know how you do it all. It's great hearing it because, like, you know, obviously I've seen articles about you playing for Ireland, read a few things, but I didn't have any understanding of the scale of it and, you know, being a, like, mm. being a, as you said, practically professional athlete um, you know and playing full-time hockey for Ireland it's absolutely fantastic and you know it's great that you have been able to come back and play camogie and I suppose we're we're delighted to to see you on the camogie field as well um you know just back to to, to Cashel then I suppose you've got a great mix I suppose of youth and you know maybe a few experienced players if Philly Forty back this year and Ono Dwyer as well yeah. and um but you know, and then there's even younger players coming up, like, you know, Anna and Lily Fahey. And, you know, it's a very, I suppose, it's an exciting time for Cashel as well. And, you know, I'm sure there's plenty in the club there, including your father there, hoping that you can make a breakthrough and, and win a senior county title this year. Yeah, definitely. I think with the squad we have at the minute, I, I have a lot of faith in us to go go the whole way. Um, we just need to definitely work as a team and use everyone's strength to our advantage. Um it's great having Philly and Una there, just a bit of guidance and they have so much knowledge of the game and it's great to have that on the field as well, all that leadership. Very good. And would um, would other girls, say, on the senior Irish hockey squad, would the other girls be playing any other sports or any even from camogie backgrounds or they all just think you're this mad to bury one that plays camogie? <laughs> <laughs> Top of it, no. Um, no, there's actually... Um, Katie Mullen, the captain, is actually, she plays camogie as well. And she went back to her club, actually, and she went, she won the Junior B um, club championship. Um, and mm. also, and there's another... Where is that? In which county is she? She's um, Northern Ireland. She's... Up. Okay. Yeah. And then she, there's also Deirdre Duke plays in Dublin for Crokes, I think it is. And she went back playing for her club, um... And a lot of the Dublin girls would have played a lot of football as well. There's a few that used to play for Dublin under 16s, the Careys and oh yeah, um, yeah. Ellen Kern and them. So yeah, it's, very good, very good. And well, how does it work for the Olympics? How would you? How does qualifying work for that? Or yeah, so this year leading up to the Olympics and next year is very important for us. We need to get ranking points. 
so top 12 go to an Olympics so all the tournaments and any matches you play are really important because you need to get points to move up the world leaderboard okay very good and um is that what's I suppose the goal now with I suppose you've you've got your senior cap you've played in in uh world cups is the Olympics another dream that you'd love to achieve to get to the Olympics and represent Ireland or are you just thinking yeah. <laughs> are you thinking count semi-finals or are you thinking Euro qualifiers or what's the- I think uh, I think I, I take a uh, step by step so probably um Tipperary Tip County final is probably my next thing to focus on and then the Olympics is hopefully a, a future goal <laughs> brilliant Quiva it's been absolutely brilliant chatting to you I really enjoyed a, a great insight into your fantastic hockey career and uh I wish you the very best luck uh, in the coming months and years ahead and we'll definitely everyone in Tipperary Camogie will be keeping a close eye on you and um, I'm sure we'll chat to you again before the year is out with the county semi-final around the corner and perhaps even a county final so thanks very much for coming on the podcast okay for the next part of the podcast I'm delighted to be joined by Eileen McLaughlin the PRO with Boherla and Duella Eileen you're very welcome to the podcast thanks a million Geraldine um, it's great to have you on because I was dying to chat to you about your very successful under 14 team um, last Saturday. If anyone doesn't know, you were taking part in the All-Ireland Community Games final. Um, you had the semi-final first, Borland beating Port Tumla 6-9-2-3. And after that, the final 4-11-1-4 uh, to against Kinvara. So a massive achievement. Um, I suppose what's even bigger achievement is the fact that it's the second year in a row of winning it. And also this year alone... Um, Boerland have won the under 14 county final and won the Fela county final uh, represented Tipperary then re- reaching the all Ireland Fela final and you're also in the under 14A final this Sunday um, so for, we'll start first we'll just chat a bit more about last Saturday uh, the community games it was on in UL I think wasn't it? Yeah that's right Geraldine look it was an unbelievable weekend for the club it's just a fantastic experience you know to get to play in facilities like UL uh, to get to play against teams from outside the county, I suppose, is a, is a novelty and it's a great challenge for girls of that age. Um, we went down, I suppose they'd played the Munster finals there two weeks ago and that's probably stood to them. You know, they had been there before and they had seen what it was all about. In the Munster finals, they had got um, over Bally Duff of Kerry and Dora Bearfield of Clare, which were a very strong team. So they were delighted then to get into the All-Ireland Finals. And then on Saturday, yeah, as you said, they bet Port Humna. What happened was actually, um, in it's usually one team from each province, but because Ulster didn't enter a team this year, Connacht were allowed to enter two teams. So that's how it ended up that there were two Galway teams. Oh, okay, so, I was wondering that, yeah. Yeah, so we played Port Humna in one semi-final, and that was a great match, like very tight at halftime. There was only four points in it. And then the girls just pulled away in the second half. But Port Umna had some great players. And, you know, I suppose our girls just, they're the type of girls, they just don't give up to the final whistle. You know, they're unreal. An exceptional bunch of girls. Um, the other semi final then was Kinvara against Dixborough. And that was a very close semi final. So uh, it ended up that Kinvara won that. So we took on Kinvara then in the final. And that was, as the manager said to me afterwards, that was the toughest match we had in all of the community games last year and this year. You know, they were a serious team and they had three or four unbelievable players. And they made us work so hard for every ball and, you know, just the rooks and the hooking and the blocking and the whole lot. But the girls... um, won it comprehensively in the end, but it didn't probably reflect the match was very tight and very tough. And should just we're so proud of them and we're just we suppose we can't believe we never would dream that our club would be, you know, you want to win a county title and they're so hard to win until that they've won um monster titles and all Ireland titles. It's it's just unbelievable. We're delighted. And you said it there yourself, an exceptional bunch of players. Like is it a you know, I suppose other clubs would be wondering what's the secret, but is this a group, you know, I know there's overlapping and things like that, but there must be a core group there that, you know, are very strong and very talented. And I know, obviously, there's natural talent and I'm sure there's parents helping coaching them at home and there's the schools. But, you know, the coaches in the club must have developed these. Are they Have they come up through under eights or is there any, is there any secret? <laughs> 
do you know what? I suppose I think a lot of things maybe have come together at the right time and it has all combined and aligned to, to help. But I suppose the number one thing is the players themselves. They're, do you know, there's, there's such a determined and committed bunch and they're very, very talented. And then we have very good management. I mean, Seamus Hickey has been the manager now for the two years um, of this team that have won the All-Ireland. And uh, he's a real stalwart of Warlach and Duala GA. He, you know, played senior for the club for so, so many years and he played under 21 for tip. So he's an experienced, you know, an experienced coach. Uh, I suppose the GA club, the facilities and all that, I think that's a big contributing factor because when we got the second field, in the GA club, it just allowed the Camogie club and the ladies football club as well. You know, it's easier to get the training slots. It's easier, the AstroTurf, you know, um, it's easier to get slots for matches. I think that's a factor, you know, because it just allows us to enter, I suppose this year we entered three under 12 teams and two under 14 teams. Like if we only had the one pitch, you wouldn't be able to do those kind of things, you know? Yeah. So that was a factor. Um, and I suppose about our underage level, of players, like as in the number of players up greatly once we had more facilities because what we did was every Saturday morning, there's a training time of 10 o'clock for absolutely everybody. So under six, under eight, under 10 girls and under seven, under nine, under 11 boys all train at the same time. And once we started that a few years ago, um, we just found our numbers went up and up and up because it's just handy. Those who are winning have to along through that um, system and I suppose when the, when you've got good numbers it's it's the main thing to start with isn't it you know brilliant yeah exactly and uh, and I suppose you know winning obviously is probably a bit of a habit too when the girls are getting used to the habit getting used to it and a bit of momentum and a bit of confidence as well would that be a factor too oh I'd say so yeah I suppose this group you know they've started to win a lot and um you know, like if you go back along I mean our club the club I suppose only reformed it was in I was doing a little bit of research in 2004 um and funnily enough that was after the success of a community games team back in 2003 that spurred a couple of parents on to say look at this girls in the parish they're talented will we get the club up and going again and uh, there had been no club in the parish since the 1970s. And it was a big step, like, and only for those parents took that step at the time, we, we wouldn't be here talking today about them. And I suppose from 2004 up until probably 2020, I think it is, we were always in the B and in the C and we had great success in those, in those championship or championships, but we didn't have the numbers, I suppose, to compete in the A or, or the players. And then it was only in 2020 was the first time we ever won an A title. So the girls won an under 12A and they've gone on now to win three under 12As in a row. And as you said, they won the under um, 14A and the Fela and last year they won the under 13A. So this just bunch seemed to be any obstacle that's put in front of them, any challenge, they just seem to be able to get over the line. And maybe maybe the momentum is with them now that they, they're, you know, they're winning. But... You know, it's fantastic because like the community games is a knockout competition. So many's the year we entered it and like you might play one match and you're gone. So from the very start, it's a knockout. And, um, you know, so it's it's great to see them having the success and it's great for the club. And, you know, I suppose the schools in the parish play a big role as well. We have three schools, uh, Duala, Borhalahan and Bally Tarsna and the principals there are all encouraging the children to play. And that's a big help as well, you know, and the GA club are very supportive of the Camogie club and, um, you know, trying to accommodate us with fixtures and all of that. So that's a factor. I suppose everything, you know, you need everything in your favour. And as you said, the parents, there's a great interest with the parents um, driving it on as well. So everything uh, at the moment seems to be going well, which are, you know, the way these waves can come and we'll, we'll enjoy them at the moment and hopefully it'll last another while anyway. Yeah, it's brilliant. No, it's a fantastic story and it's one that I want to definitely mention on the podcast um, when you, when you you know, the success that, that you've had. It's very interesting listening to it there and like you said, all the different factors and I was thinking of the primary schools as well and I know you, you get cleaned up in that as well uh, oh. before the summer as well with titles as well. So, there's, a, there's a, a group of girls in Boerland well, that definitely have a lot of medals uh, to collect, I suppose, at the end of this year. And it's brilliant. And look, 
it's not all about medals, but it's fantastic to see the t- talent being developed and I suppose being rewarded as well with winning titles. So um, I suppose best luck as well uh, on Sunday. You're in an under 14A final against a very good Holy Cross Valley Cal team too. So that'll be another cracking, cracking match. And um wish all the under 15 teams, I suppose, the best luck in their finals this weekend. Uh Eileen, thanks a million for coming on. Uh, great chatting to you. And uh uh like I said, onwards and upwards for Borland Wella Camogie Club. Thanks so much, Geraldine. Thanks a million. Now, for this part of the podcast, we have to take a look back on the FBD Insurance Adult Championships played at the weekend. Uh, we had two big games in the FBD Insurance Senior Championship, two quarterfinals, Clonty Rossmore and Turda Sarsfields. Uh, that ended with a win for Clonty Rossmore, three goals and 12 points, Turda Sarsfields, two goals and eight. Uh, really high entertaining game of Camogie, Turda Sarsfields getting off to a fantastic start, building up a big lead, but uh, Clonty uh bought it back and uh there was very little between the sides at halftime only two points and then a massive second half by Clonty Rossmore um meant they ran out winners there. After the game I spoke to uh Clonty Rossmore midfielder Courtney Ryan and manager James Heffernan. I'm right, joined by Courtney Ryan now. Courtney great win three twelve to two eight. Um you made it hard for yourselves though you give Turles I suppose a big lead. They started really well. Were you getting worried after that? Yeah, I suppose it's something we probably need to take a look at. In our last few games, we've been a bit slow to start, so definitely over the next two weeks, building up to the county semi, we probably need to take a look at it because we're we're screwing ourselves over, maybe going into later stages of the game. But we're just delighted to have gotten over the line today. I mean, like, Sars are a super team, and we never underestimated them all. We knew they were going to come up um, to our home pitch here tonight and throw the kitchen sink at us, and they did exactly that. We're just uh, steep that we got over the line in the end. And in fairness, you know... You had plenty of uh, players getting on the scoreboard, like say Emer, Burke, Kate Ferncombe, Casey Hennessy, all threatening up front. Um, you know, your forwards are really clicking this year. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's something that we've been working on, I suppose. Um, there's no point in, point in like sugar going, I suppose, last year. Probably too much reliance on caught. And definitely, um, if we want to go on and win the county final, we know that we all, all the rest of um, the 14 players on the pitch and whatever other subs come in, we all need to step up and get on that scoreboard because... Um, we, we need to be threatening all around the field and we're well capable and we know that so we need to just keep um, pushing on now especially two weeks time to build up to the county semi now I think against Cashel I'm not sure but. Yeah, the draw has just taken place so Drummond Inch against Anna Carty and Cloney Rossmore against Cash Kincormis you haven't played them obviously this year don't know I don't think you played them last year either did no. you? So, no, we haven't met them in championship yet No. Yeah, so what, what are your thoughts on that draw? Uh, sure I suppose we know that Cashel are a serious side. Uh, they have serious players. Like we know they have got a serious caliber of players. Like we're talking about Sore Shine, Cream, Blair, they have Queef Verdu back in the mix and um a few others. So like we know again it's going to be a serious battle and I suppose it's great to note that in the past few years the competitive edge of the Camogie usually there there was a top two teams and every single year now going forward it seems to be getting closer and closer the competitiveness of it, which is great to bring on all the teams and the players. And it's great to make it and the match is a bit more electric, like I'm sure as a spectator today, I'm sure you would comment that our match was fairly um, decent tonight. So, yeah, yeah great, it's great. Super quality. And just uh, a quick n- comment maybe on, uh, we see Cora Hennessy coming on there as a sub and I think in the stand they were saying there's only seven weeks since she had a baby. So yeah, she's yeah. some warrior. Oh, absolutely. And I know that she was helping out as selector um, so far this year and she's only dying to get back onto the pitch. So... Um, she'll bust herself now to see if she can get herself match, match ready and match fit. But um, yeah, she's determined out. So hopefully she might um, be able to do a few more training sessions. And as you said, she only had a child about seven weeks ago. So it's fair going so for herself. So she's been promoted or demoted from selector to, to, to player? Uh, you, can, you can look at it whatever way you want. <laughs> now by Very James well. Heffernan. James, a tough physical game. You got over the line in the end. Um, I suppose you were well on top in the second half. Yeah, very a very physical game, I suppose. I, I, like I find out with a lot of the Camogie games, like there's no there was no easy ball, there was no um, loose ball. Um, like we were saying at half time, like we're, like we're steeped, you know, two points down. Um, you know, because Sarah's were probably on top for a lot of it, like a one four to a point to no score down, and it looked very very hairy at that stage, you know. But um, I thought, in fairness, to our girls now we come out in the second half, in the first 15 minutes of the second half, I thought we did very well. Um, you know, kind of stemmed the tide a bit from Sarah's. Um, kind of got to grips with their forwards inside, like their inside forwards were doing damage in the first half. I thought our backs really stepped up well in the second half as well. Um, so look, overall, like, we're delighted to be in the semi-final. Like, this, like we knew this was going to be a big, 
I suppose a big test. So like we're very happy now. We have two weeks to prepare. Like we've again, I said to after the drum match that we have a load to work on now for the next two weeks as well. And and you're after getting that Castle King Cormans in the draw, a team you haven't played in recent years in Championship. Um, what are your thoughts on on that draw? Yeah, um, like we played them in, in was a league or a challenge match area around the year and like very lively. They've, they've um, loads of young players and and they've you know got a few experienced players back as well now. By all accounts, the lads um, like they're probably the most impressive team that has played so far uh, in the championship. Um, top their group, you know, fairly convincingly. So like you know, they will win probably as favourites in that game and that, prob that probably suits us in some ways. You know, um, we, si we still probably have a lot to work on. We probably haven't caught fire. Uh, we're probably, you know, um, probably expecting to be maybe getting more scores. Um, but uh, look, cash would be a very tough game. But like we're two weeks, it's, you know, like it's all do or die now from now on. You know what I mean? So yeah, you, you held Hurlis to just three points there in the second half. That was, I suppose, definitely a positive. Yeah, it was. No, as I said, like I thought, our backs did, did really well. Like you know, like we've Eva and Norna, two two kind of young corner backs, but they're very very composed on the ball. Did really well. Like Myra's next and full back. Um, you know, like we like we're. Like we'd be confident that we that we can hold, I suppose, um, good good forwards. But like, like when you have quality forwards, like um, the Gordon Lock Nans there, those full forward, like it's very hard, very hard to stop those kind of players. You know what I mean? But I suppose you have to get bodies in around them. And um, I thought we did that well in the second half. You know what I mean? We kind of snuck out a lot of their, you know, probably closed down the spaces. I thought better in the second half, which, you know, which kind of worked to our advantage. Second quarter final then was the meeting of Birds to Hire and Aero Ganicarty uh, in Kilcoman. Um, Another highly entertaining game, Burgess Sahara, um, in the end defeated by Aero Ganicarty, two goals and 14 points, three goals and seven. Um, Burgess were out Amy Kendi and Cueve Maher, who couldn't play due to injury and illness. Um, they still got off to a good start with a nearly goal from Kier de Maher. Uh, Eilish McDonald though, responded in 20 minutes with a goal of, of, for Anna Carty. And at halftime, Anna Carty led um, by two points, one five to one three. Uh, we had two goals then after the restart again from one from Eilish McDonald um, and then one from Laura Reed. Both sides exchanged points then throughout the second half and um, Birds to Harris stuck for stuck for another goal this time from Clayton O'Halloran just leave between two between the sides two nine to three four um, but Jean Kelly able to wire in flying form there for Anna Carty and uh, Help them to run out winners. So a massive result for Aero Ganicarty, uh, who first win of the championship. They had two defeats and a draw in the group stages before this quarter final, but they are certainly coming good at the right time and are true to a county semi final. After the game in third in Clonty, the third is Clonty game. Um, the draw was made for the championship semi finals and happening in two weeks' time, Saturday the 8th of, of October, um, Drum and Inch will meet Aero Ganicarty, and then the other semi-final is Cashel King Cormix and Cologne Ross Moore, so two brilliant games to look forward there to there in the FBD Insurance um, Senior Championship. Uh, at the weekend, then, we also had the FBD Insurance Intermediate Championship, three games in that. There was wins for Shannon, there was wins for, um, sorry, Newport Ballon Hinch over Borland Weta, Five goals and 12 points to three goals, 11. A draw between Kerr and Bursley. Two goals and eight for Kerr. One, 11 for Bursley. And then a win for Kilowan McDonough's against Tumi Vara. That game was on Sunday. And Kilowan won that. Two goals and 11 to three, one. We have a couple of games in the Intermediate Championship happening this week. We have Shannon Rovers and Tumi Vara. And we have Kilowan and Newport Bell and the Hinge. Both of them are on Saturday at half five with Shannon Rovers at home and Kilowan McDonough at home. And the junior B2 quarter final took place on Sunday evening. That game was between um, Shannon Rovers and Bally Bacon Grange. And Bally Bacon actually only had 14 players. Um, they were short on the evening, had 14 players, but still produced a, a very good performance, uh, one that they can be very, very proud of. At halftime, uh, Shannon Rovers led one goal and three points to two points. Um, thanks to an Erica Fogarty goal. And um, again, both sides exchanged points in the second half. Bally Bacon were on top for many periods of the second half, but hit a few uh, wides that they'll definitely regret. Julie Brennan was excellent for Shannon Rovers. Um, and she got a goal. Um, 
late on in the game and a second goal put the result beyond doubt really for Shannon Rovers then and they ran out 2-7 deservedly winners on the scoreline of 2-7 6 points so a big win for Shannon Rovers there puts them through to the Junior B2 semi-finals and they are happening this Sunday uh, in the County Camogie Grounds in the rack. It's a double header, Clonty Ross Moore against Arrow and Akarty at 1 pm, and then Tumi Barra against Shannon Rovers, and that game is at 2 45 pm. Um, also on Sunday, then we have the Junior B semi final between Silver Mines and Port Row. That game is in McDonough Park Arena at 2 pm. And in on Saturday in Nina also at 4.30 p.m. We have the Junior A semi-final between Moneygall and Kildangan. So loads of matches happening again this weekend. Uh, keep an eye out on uh, social media um, for the latest fixtures. Be sure to get to a game. It's been an absolutely brilliant championship so far this year right across the board. And it's only going to get better as we get down to the, the real uh good knockout games, the semi-finals, the finals, and so much happening in the next few weeks. So uh, make sure and get to a game and support your club. Uh, so that's all for the podcast for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe and give us a like.